you. Um, yes, like you said, I am a QGIS core developer and I work at uh, Auslandia. And yes, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, two, two software I very much like, uh, PostGIS and QGIS, and uh, how to configure each other to work uh, perfectly. So I'm not going to talk about all the features related to QGIS and PostGIS because there are so many. Uh, so I'm going to focus on some main features and maybe some uh, unknown features for some of you. Um, so I'll talk about relations, uh, PostgreSQL notification, how to output your processing to database, how to manage your database from the browser, um, how to save the project in database, and then I will, uh, if we add time, I hope so, uh, I would try to speak about the new thing, SQL logging. Uh, so first of all, relations. Uh, so I'm going to take a use case to explain clearly uh, the, how you configure your relation. When you design your tables, uh, quite every time you are creating table and you are creating association between this table with primary key and foreign key. So let's say we have uh, airports and airlines and we want to have some uh, association between airports and airlines, meaning that we have uh, NM relations. That means that airports have airlines and airlines are installed in airports. Um, and so we have two tables, airports and airlines, and we have a third table which is making the association between the, the, the two tables. Uh, if we want to see the, uh, the SQL beyond this use case, or if you, have to, if you want to have more information about everything I'm going to describe, everything is in the QGIS documentation. You have in a link in my presentation. Uh, so first of all, the, the easy way uh, is once you have defined every primary key for any key in your database, is to go into your QGIS to load all the layers. So the free one, airport, airlines, and airport and lines. And then you go to Project Properties Relations. You click on the button Discover Relation, and QGIS will automati automatically discover all the relations. So you see here that we have a relation. Airport is re referent. Uh, yes. Airport airline is referencing airport, and airport airline is also referencing airlines. Once you agree with what uh, QGIS has discovered, you select all, you click the OK button, and now you're good. QGIS is aware about the relations. Uh, but there is still some configuration uh, to do to have a really good uh, user experience with relation in QGIS. First one is to enable and check the option evaluate default values on provider side, because imagine that with your primary key, you have a sequence, which happens quite often. Uh, when you create an item in QGIS, maybe you have already seen this value, next val, my sequence, uh, and this value is evaluated when you commit on the QGIS database. But it's not possible to keep these values when you have a relation. Uh, because when you have a relation, QGIS has to have the real primary key. It has to have a real number, one, two, three, four. So you can say the airport one is connected to the airline four, etc., etc. So check this option, but it's still not enough according to me because in the default transaction mode, the option that we see above, uh, local edit buffer, you will have to edit all the relation content layer. You will have to save it in the appropriate order, meaning that you will have to save the airport. Uh, airlines before airport airlines. Uh, and so what happens if there is an error in the, um, in the, in, in the save process? Uh, well, you could find yourself in an inconsistency state. Uh, so that's not completely uh, really a good user experience that we have here. So there is another option, transaction mode, which is automatic transaction groups. And well, this one works differently. It opens a, a database transaction as soon as that you click on the edit button. And everything that you are going to do are going to be um, done on the database directly in live. Uh, so the good thing is that all layers from the database are edited at once. 
cool things is that it evaluates triggers, um, meaning that if you have some um, intelligent triggers that update the database, then you will see the modification appears directly into your QGIS. So the cool <coughs> things if you have really um, smart triggers. Uh, the bad things about this mode is the long living transaction. So there is another QGIS developer which has list the different caveats between uh, uh, behind this option. Uh, but to sum up, the, the, the more important caveat, the more important drawback of these uh, things, that you're going to lock your modified row. Meaning that if you, have, uh, if you are modifying an airport, well, if there is another user who wants to modify those, it will be blocked. It, uh, in QGIS, it will hang. Uh, so there is a timeout, but still, it's not really uh, perfect. It's not really cool things. So we have a new transaction mode, which is called buffer transaction group. It's new in 3.26. Uh, and um, it's a better of the two words, meaning that all the modifications are locally, they are buffered, and they are replayed only one on saved in the correct order regarding the relation and in on one transaction. So it solves all the issues. The only thing is that you don't have uh, the trigger evaluation live. The triggers will be ev evaluated, but it will be uh, when you commit, only one. So now we have everything configured. We can go through form configuration. I'm going to pass quickly on this. Uh, be careful if you have uh, an M relation, you have to switch the cardinality because by default it's one to N. So you have to switch uh, with uh, N to M. It's called airlines ID. I, I'm not sure about the label. But what the meaning of this, but switch and it will work. Um, oh. And that's it. Yeah. Just is just a little demo of how it works. So we have the three layers. When I click on the edit button, everything is edited at once. Um, and so if I open the forms, you see the airports and the airlines. And so here, I just click it on a button where I can create an airline associated to the current, to the selected airport. So I'm going to add an airline. And so you see, it has been associated. Uh, so I have added Air France, and I'm going to add another. So you can see the, the ID is directly evaluated. There is 15, so it has already been evaluated from the provider, from the Postgre provider. So now uh, I am over with the relation. I'm going to talk about PostgreSQL Notify. So the Notify is a keyword, um, Notify is a keyword in PostgreSQL that uh, helps to trigger uh, an event directly to the um, Postgre backend client. And so in QGIS, you can trigger a layer refresh on a PostgreSQL event, meaning insertion, update, deletion, truncate table, this kind of thing. How you do that? So you have a little piece of uh, SQL. Uh, so you have to create a function. And in the function, you have to call the notify keyword with the QGIS label. And you have a message. I'll talk about this later. Here is written points updated. And so then you create a trigger. And you set, you set, you, you call your function uh, directly when there is an insertion, update, delete, trunking truncate, whatever you want. <coughs> Once you have done that in your PostgreSQL database, you go into QGIS, and uh, you click on the rendering tabs on your layers. Uh, so here is my points layers, rendering tab. And I'm going to check the option refresh layer on, application, on notification. And then you have another option when you, can f you, you could filter on the, on the message uh, on, a, on, a, on a message. So here I, I just set points updated, which was the, um, the message that I write in my uh, SQL configuration. But so you can have different type of notification and refresh layer according of uh, different type of notification. And so, yeah, well, it works like this, just a little demo. So here you see that I have points. I'm going to insert directly in the database the points, and you could see 
that um, in the middle of QGIS, uh, there is points appearing uh, without any user operation. QGIS is refreshing themselves auto automatically, itself automatically. And what if you want to do not only refresh? Uh, yes, it's possible. And how with a little bit of Python, so sorry for the people who don't know Python much, more, much well, um, where you can put your Python, uh, Python source code uh, in a plugin, uh, either in a startup strip, in some macros, uh, or directly in the Python console if you want to just try, test. And you can do whatever is uh, available from the QGIS API, so it's very cool. Here is a small example. I define a Python function and I call um, and I push a message into the message bar of, um, of QGIS. And just to do that, then you have to connect uh, to the notify signal uh, and to associate to you on notify method. And then it does this. So when I send up insert a point, you will see that the layer is also refreshed, but you have, um, in addition, you have a message which is uh, displayed here, uh, notify, points updated, uh, and that's pretty it. So I'm going to set another point. That's it. So you can do whatever you want. Uh, could you use it to refresh other layer? Uh, yes, but don't do it because there is everything, uh, everything already plugged in. Uh, into QGIS, it's called data dependencies. Uh, so the, the use case behind this is, uh, some of you maybe have already encountered this issue, is you have a database where you have nodes and lines, and your nodes are on uh, intersecting lines, and you want to refresh your lines when you move the node, and you want to refresh the nodes when you move your lines. So when to do this, the, the better way to do this is to use data dependencies, where you're going to say, well, on my nodes, when there is a modification on nodes, I want you to refresh the layer lines. And you can do uh, vice versa. Uh, just a quick demo about how to output processing to database. Uh, so you go, so yeah. So here. So just here I'm creating a, a buffer uh, I'm launching a buffer treatment on a geo package or shapefile, I don't know, layer. Um, I'm just uh, changing the distance to have a mean, uh, meaningful distance. And so I'm going to um, change the output here just to uh, save to database. And then I could uh, select my database, uh, the schema, and a unique table name. The table name uh, needs to doesn't have to exist on the database. Once you do that, you have a pro proper QGIS data source, and you run the treatment, and everything is done locally, then it's pushed to the database. Uh, then I'm just going to remove the layer and check uh, directly from the DB manager if it exists. Normally, it should exist. Um, and that's it. So a really cool thing if you want to just load a shape file or geo package, put it in your database, refactor some field before, uh, before this, this kind of thing. Very useful. Uh, quite recent feature is you can manage your database directly from the browser. Um, and you can do many things. You can create table. Uh, you can choose the table name, the different field, the type of field, the geometry type the name of the geometry colon, et cetera, et cetera, the CRS. Um, you can also uh, create, rename, and delete schema, create, rename, and delete, and truncate table. You can add and delete field. You can export to a file directly from the uh, database browser. You can also execute SQL, uh, see the result, load as a new layer directly in QGIS, choose the unique colon, the geometry colon, and maybe some of you are wondering, but uh, uh, what's the point? Uh, those features are already existing in DP Manager, and does it replace Database Manager? Uh, well, yes, uh, but no. 
uh, not at the time. Uh, there is a discussion, if you want to uh, see the, the different discussion uh, messages between QGIS uh, developer and user to, because a QGIS developer wanted to remove uh, completely the database manager. And there is still some feature missing, some key features like creating, managing constraint, uh, create a view from query, modify a colon, oh, uh, table historization. I'm, I'm not sure everyone is using this at the moment. And uh, maybe if you are using this, maybe you should not and use something else. Uh, so it's a great presentation about cart yesterday. Maybe you should use cart instead of this. Um, but uh, yeah, so for now, we cannot remove the, the database manager because there is still some feature missing. And, uh, but in the end, it will be the case. So someday the, data, the database manager will, uh, will leave us. And uh, what the, the, that why we, do we want to replace the database manager? It's uh, mainly because it's kind of a separate application. It's written in Python. Uh, while the entire rest of the QGIS application is written in C++, it doesn't use the QGIS provider API. It's not that well tested, and it may be also not well uh, not tested at all. Uh, it's kind of fragile. There is a lot of issue on the on the QGIS tracker. So prefer the browser feature every time is possible, and uh, and that's it. Another feature is uh, saving project in database. To enable it, you have to check the option allow saving loading QGIS project in the database. And um, once you do that, you, have, uh, you can go to your project save to and choose uh, to PostgreSQL. And you can check, you can choose your database, your schema, the name of your project. And you have a button where you, where you can um, remove the project that you don't want anymore. Uh, just a small hint, if you have external files like uh, maybe SVG file in your symbology, please be, be aware that if you have this SVG file in your uh, PC, in local, and you want to share your project with uh, other colleagues, uh, well, maybe they won't have the same file in their machine, uh, maybe not at the same place. So the better f uh, the, it's better to embed directly the file into the project uh, before saving it uh, in the PostgreSQL database. Um, yes. Uh, last but not least, a very cool feature which appears in 3.26 is SQL logging. Uh, it allows you to see all the requests sent by QGIS to the PostgreSQL database. Um, and uh, you can see uh, the time uh, the request uh, spent, uh, uh, how much row has been returned by the request, the kind of things you can see also uh, the, the, the request which has been sent to PostgreSQL. Uh, it's very, very cool to debug and to understand what happens between your project and PostgreSQL database. Because we have, uh, it's very useful to me because we have a lot of clients will ask us, well, my project is too slow, it spent too much time, uh, why is it slow? And to be honest, in 99% of the, the, the time, it's because of uh, uh, badly written requests, badly written view, and uh, uh, missing indexes, missing materialized view. So it's very useful to debug this because before we have to say, well, uh, could you enable the log on your PostgreSQL server? And maybe the guy doesn't have the administration rights to do so. so it's very, very useful. You can go in a view, panels, development, debugging tools, and it log all the requests, the select, the insert, the update, everything related to style, everything. And it's not the purpose of the, the presentation, but it log also HTTP requests. So if you are opening a WMS layer, you will see all the requests, uh, and it's also very useful. And that's it for me. If you have any question, I will be glad to answer it.